Welcome to my introduction to hemostasis and coagulation sessions. I am Kathleen Wong and I am a hematopathologist at the University of Alberta Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. By the end of this series of sessions, you will be able to achieve the following three objectives. Number one, name the key components of normal hemostasis and how they are evaluated in the clinical lab. Number two, describe how primary and secondary hemostasis work together. And number three, understand how primary and secondary hemostasis are evaluated in the clinical coagulation lab. This is the outline of the three sessions. Today is part one, where we will focus our attention on normal and primary hemostasis. The next time during part two in a separate recording, we'll be discussing secondary hemostasis. And finally, in part three, we will focus our attention on the laboratory evaluation of secondary hemostasis and provide a brief overview of a process called fibrinolysis. So let's start with normal hemostasis. When the blood vessel is injured as a result of trauma, the subsequent defect in the blood vessel wall disrupts the inner endothelial cell lining. This triggers a repair mechanism that ultimately stops the bleeding. Normal hemostasis is the physiologic process by which the blood vessel lining cells, also called vascular endothelial cells, plus platelets and coagulation factors in the blood, work together to stop bleeding at the site of injury. Coagulation is the process by which liquid blood is converted into a solid blood clot. Therefore, coagulation is a key component of hemostasis, but is not the only factor necessary in achieving normal hemostasis. A blood clot is also known as a thrombus. A very practical way to think about normal hemostasis is to compare it to the process of building a house. To build a house, the hole in the ground must first be filled in by a solid concrete foundation. After that, then the house can be built properly on top. Normal hemostasis aims to repair the injured blood vessel to stop bleeding. In essence, there is a hole or defect in the blood vessel that must also be sealed so hemostasis is very comparable to the process of house construction. The hole in the blood vessel needs to be filled with a solid and stable foundation so that the blood clot can be built properly on top. Primary hemostasis is the process of building that solid and stable foundation. After the foundation or platelet plug is properly built, then the rest of the blood clot can be built on top through secondary hemostasis. Secondary hemostasis is coagulation, the process of converting liquid blood into solid clot. The sequential activation of coagulation or clotting factor proteins in an orderly fashion is analogous to dominoes falling over in a preset pattern. The end product is a stable and strong fibrin blood clot. Before we move on to primary hemostasis, it is important to realize that normal hemostasis as a whole requires three conditions for optimal function that is normal blood temperature, pH, and calcium concentration. As we just discussed, primary hemostasis is the process of building the solid foundation or platelet plug to seal the hole in the blood vessel so that the rest of the blood clot may form properly on top. Primary hemostasis depends on the interaction between the blood vessel collagen layer, platelets, and von Willebrand factor. Let's see how this actually works. Once there is injury to the blood vessel and the endothelial lining cells are no longer intact, the underlying collagen layer is now visible and exposed to the blood flowing within the blood vessel. As a result, the von Willebrand factor flowing by the injury site sees the collagen and changes its conformation by spreading out like glue over the collagen layer. The platelets flowing by the injury site also see the exposed collagen and von Willebrand factor and they start adhering or sticking to the site via platelet surface glycoprotein 1b. This platelet adhesion process activates the platelets to change shape as shown and to secrete contents from their granules. Platelet secretion further activates platelets by making them aggregate to one another. Platelet aggregation occurs via surface glycoprotein 2b3a. In addition to aggregating to one another, the platelets are also binding to fibrinogen in the forming blood clot. Platelet secretion attracts and recruits more platelets to the injury site so that they too may undergo adhesion and secretion, resulting in additional platelet activation and aggregation. This slide summarizes platelet adhesion, secretion, and aggregation in primary hemostasis. In order for primary hemostasis to function optimally, once again there must be normal temperature, pH, and calcium concentration in the blood. 
In the laboratory, we can measure platelet number and function, as well as von Willebrand factor level and function as the main indicators of primary hemostasis. Platelet number is easily obtained by ordering a complete blood count, also known as a CBC, or just a platelet count on the patient's blood sample. Additional platelet parameters, including size, granulation, and morphology, are obtained by reviewing a peripheral blood smear. Since platelet function is affected by numerous antiplatelet medications, a thorough medication history is also essential to complement the above laboratory assessment. Special platelet function tests are only used after first assessing the CBC or platelet count and blood film. Von Willebrand factor level and function are also assessed when evaluating primary hemostasis. This concludes part one of this series and we have described that normal hemostasis leads to the cessation of blood flow at the site of injury and comprises of the interaction between blood vessel collagen, platelets, and clotting factors. Primary hemostasis is the interaction between the blood vessel collagen layer, platelets, and von Willebrand factor to build that solid foundation on top of which secondary hemostasis may occur. Normal calcium, pH, and temperature in the blood are essential to overall hemostasis and coagulation. In part two, in a separate recording, we will go through secondary hemostasis. Thank you for your attention.